to help us solve our little conundrum, we're going to do an angular momentum magic trick. So let's think about that disk, or really any mass, moving in an x, y coordinate system and just translating along at v relative to some origin, like that. What we're going to do is start with something we know is true for translating objects. The sum of the forces external equals the time rate of change of the momentum. There's Newton's three laws all combined into one, basically. So we know that's true for this thing moving along. So now we're going to do one of our sleight of hand moves in this magic trick is we're going to take r cross of each side. Okay, so r meaning the position vector of uh, the mass of where it is right? from the origin. So we're going to take r across all these external forces. It's just a sum. That's really r across each one of them. So we can put it inside the, um, the summation. Nothing wrong with that. So we're going to take the position vector cross with every one of those external forces. Maybe there's zero forces. Maybe there's one force. And we're going to say r cross dp dt. OK. So when we look at this, one thing jumps out at us. This thing, this is a torque. That's the sum of the external torques. If this happened to have some torque being applied to it around the origin. Remember, a torque always requires a point of reference. Well, it's defined by this vector r. So from here, we can say in our magic trick, the sum of the external torques equals r cross dp dt. OK. And now here comes the second slide of hand. OK, we're going to add um, P cross dr dt to both sides. Why? Well, it's OK. <clears throat> this is an equation. We can add a term to both sides as long as it's the same. It's still an equation. Right? So we'll say uh, P cross dr dt plus the sum of the external, oh my god, the sum of the external torques equals uh, P cross dr dt plus uh, our original term, R cross P D D T. You know what I mean, R cross dp dt. Right, so that part is just that part. All right, not bad. Now what we've got to realize, we look at that and say, what is dr dt? What is dr dt is v, right? dr dt is v. So we realize this is really p cross v. But what do we know about p and v? They're in the same direction, right? One is just the mass times velocity, m times v, cross with v. v cross v is a vector cross with itself. A vector cross with itself is zero. Same direction, no cross product. Sign of the angle between them is zero. So this side, we're going to drop it like it's not. Okay, that's a zero. And then we're going to add the sum of the external torques. Right? And now we look at that one, and we realize that this is sort of like applying the sum rule to this, d dt of r cross p. Right. If I told you to do that, and you knew a little vector calculus, you'd say, OK, well, you hold this one constant and take the time derivative of that one, plus you hold that one constant and take the time derivative of that one. Well, that's what that is. OK. Now we cheated a little bit. right? We added something to make that happen, but we added 0. And just to play it safe, we added it over here, too. It doesn't matter. It's 0. I added it to that side just for fun. It was unnecessary. But what we now have is uh, this new thing, r cross p, and it appears that if you add up all your external torques, that will change something called r cross p. It would also appear that if there are no external torques, an isolated system, something called r cross p is going to uh, remain constant. And r cross p is L. r cross p is the angular momentum, and it's the way you describe the angular momentum of just an isolated particle moving along, whether it's accelerating or stopped or moving in a circle, doesn't matter. Moving in a straight line, doesn't matter. So let's write it out in all its glory here, that the sum of the external torques is dl dt. That's basically kind of like Newton's second law for angular momentum. 
And, uh, and we define L, the angular momentum, as R, the position vector from the origin to the object that's moving at P, momentum P. And as with any rotational quantity, angular momentum, torque, whatever it is, you've got to define an origin, and you do because of this vector right here. You can't say where it is with an R vector unless you define an origin. So it's always around the origin that was set up with R. So now we start to see maybe the disk did have angular momentum. Mm. 